Hello everyone and welcome to our new Stellaris series. I am Mal and I'm joined by my friends Vanguard and Sabouts and we have been excited for this for quite some time and we've been planning this for months. So we have both Banks 1.5 which is the new update which brings a whole host of new mechanics to the game which are really really cool and like previous titles with Paradox they give you a lot of value in terms of what they do in the new version and then at the same time we actually have our first sort of official expansion it's not really a dlc it's really an expansion with utopia so uh what do you what do you think guys vanguards about oh it's i think we're about to kill a lot of xenos yeah. <laughs> i hope so um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think folks are probably pretty familiar with Sabouts at this point because we do a lot of things together and Vanguard and I have done, I think we did Seven Days to Die together, but we've been planning this Stellaris thing for a while. Um, you know, of the new features, I'm just curious before, and just so you guys know in this introductory episode, which is episode zero in the playlist, um, we're going to go over our our empires, we're going to briefly go over the galaxy settings and why we're choosing what we're choosing, and then episode one will actually be the first gameplay video, and we're planning to release those at the same time, so that'll be available as well. But I'm curious um, with both of you, and why don't we start with, with Vanguard, but what is of the new features... Yeah, and just from Banks, not necessarily from Utopia, but what's the coolest thing you think they've added to the, the game, Vanguard? In my opinion, now the science ships, when they are scanning the systems, they just don't reset the query when they found an enemy or they have to jump out. They just jump out and resume what they're doing. This is the best feature they ever placed on this game, in my opinion. But the other things, I don't know, maybe... Now the border attraction with Fallen Empires is awesome. There are a lot of great things they did. Yeah, yeah. There was a bunch of quality of life things. I yeah. agree with you too about the whole them resuming like their next command in terms of going to the next system to scan or what have you and not just flipping out and forgetting what they were doing. What about you, Sabouts? What do you think is the coolest thing that they've added in 1.5? Yeah, I mean, that quality of life thing is super important, that's for sure. I am I know personally myself, I'm excited to mess around with all the slaving uh, mechanics they've altered and changed. Uh, they really, <laughs> yeah, they've really put a lot on there. I mean, the fact that you can use slaves as livestock, I mean, what more could you possibly ask for? Yeah, right? Processing them into food or forced <laughs> labor or what have you. And that's also, too, that, that brings up the point is that we typically have a theme with every... Um, um, we have a theme with every series so um this one we're, we're we're bad guys so it's instead of being bromance cute force like the last time where we were friendly guys trying to bring freedom to the galaxy this time it's bromance brute force um so we're a mix of slaver scumbag you know uh tyrannical uh dictators this time out so <laughs> which is oh, yeah. gonna be fun i think it's gonna be fun to be the bad guys um i also want to give a, a a quick thanks to to the the folks on the stellaris um subreddit i had asked um sort of on behalf of the group what kind of characteristics would make the quote-unquote best bad guys um uh, empires and i got a whole host uh they shared a whole host of ideas with us so really appreciate that as well all right so why don't we go into let's do um why don't we do a quick overview of our empires and uh talk about galaxy settings a little bit and then we can wrap this up how's that sound awesome. fantastic okay so why don't we start with um vanguard why don't we start with your empire? Okay, so this is my empire, guys. You're seeing a similar screen that I am seeing on both of my friends' interfaces. Uh, basically, we're doing a militaristic uh, conqueror type of empire. I mean, so we have the English Admiralty to increase their weapons rate of fire. Militaristic for the same reason, materialistic, so we can keep up with our robots. Yes, I'm doing a robot race. And that's why you're seeing mechanists also. Those both things work together. I place it up charismatic, intelligent, and weak because I want to at least compensate a little bit for the leadership on the leadership of the amount of research insane AI get. And charismatic because the, it's the name of my race. It's cute but ordinary. So he pretends to be a nice guy at first, but later on he just conquers you all. So that's it, pretty much everything else is standard. Mass drives, hyperspace, and this type of ship that I like. Uh, in fact, these avian ships is a DLC thing. They are the new ships of the, the expansion. So I want to see how they look. <laughs> that's all. So go ahead, Mo. Bounce, why don't you go over yours and then I'll, I'll wrap up with the empires. 
Yeah, so I actually went with sort of a spider theme <laughs> with my empire, and I've, that's actually what I got set up here. All sorts of kind of spidery stuff, um, because that seems super evil and terrifying. Nobody likes spiders. So I actually went for Star Empire, went Imperial uh, for the uh, sort of uh, election type. Uh, distinguished uh, ad, uh, Admirality. Uh, efficient bureaucracy that gives me plus two on my core sector systems. I noticed last playthrough we did, it seemed like we were constantly in there, especially in the early game, it was tough to try to get uh, lots of systems. And I personally like having core sector systems because uh, I think the AI still, uh, I don't know if they do in this update, but in the last update, they did a really shoddy job at uh, managing uh, any other uh, separate entities. So I'd like to manage as much as my own as possible. Uh, other than that, went Xenophobe, which is super fitting, I think, and Phonetic Militarist, uh, trying to keep up with the AI. That's going to be pretty important. And uh, just Mass Drives. Uh, we're doing hyperspace travel for the whole thing uh, for different traits, uh, Sedentary and repugnant, uh, repugnant, because it doesn't really matter uh, for other species' happiness for the most part. And then Sedentary, uh, just seemed like free points for the most part, but very strong and rapid breeders, uh, which feels kind of fitting for a spider themed race. So that's uh, what I got. Okay, awesome. And I've got, uh, I am the uh, Mal Slimium Imperium, and I'm playing the, uh, the uh, badass looking snail guy because, you know, come on now, that's just great. Right. <laughs> so I am. Uh, I am also uh, imperial government type. I went with f fanatic materialist for the additional uh, army damage and rate of fire, um, and authoritarian for resettlement cost and to reduce slave unrest. There's lots of ways to handle slave unrest um, in this new version of the game. Um, additional armies. There's different technologies and buildings that you can put in. Um, obviously, different governor types. So there's lots of ways to handle it, and. Uh, let's be clear, we are playing, and we'll get into this when we do the, the uh, settings, we are playing on insane difficulty, so we needed to be a little bit more uh, aggressive type um, in terms of our, our offense, but this is by far not the most offensive type that you can make. You can, um, we're very well aware that there are certain new civics traits that you can take in com com combination with certain government types um, that would allow you to have just a ridiculous amount of rate of fire but from a role-playing perspective, we want to be sort of like a, a trifecta of doom, right? We want the three of, three of our empires to be together, and um, we would have been restricted on being able to form a federation and things like that. So that's why you don't see, like, the super ridiculous, uh, super whatever it was. What, what did it come out to be? It was, like, 58% rate of fire increase you could stack up or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was close super. To that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, really, <laughs> it's really crazy good. And if you're playing by yourself, you might want to build an empire like that. But just so you know, that's the reason why we didn't is because we wanted to be able to form our own evil federation. Um, I've got a Slaver's Guild, so plus food and mineral. Uh, output and then uh, syncretic evolution, which is really cool. It gives you four starting pops of a subservient species uh, that are essentially more docile. Uh, and, you know, with the reduced cost um, to resettle and things like that, it's, it's, it's pretty strong out of the gate. I've tested it. Uh, you know, you can resettle some of the slaves to another planet and then set up a whole planet basically as, you know, go give me my minerals and stuff and do it now and like it. <laughs> so it just fits the evil snail slaver thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, I took repugnant just like uh, Sabouts did. I took decadent, so minus 10% happiness without slaves, but I will always be doing the slaver thing. Um, agrarian for plus 15% food and industrious for plus 15% minerals. Uh, I have mass drivers and hyperdrive tech uh, just like the other guys do. So that's my empire. Now when we look to galaxy settings, uh, the first one that m might raise a hand from people that have watched previous series is the galaxy size, which we did on small. Um, it's about, can you can maybe give people a little bit better idea why we, we chose to do that? I sure can. So we actually decided to go with a small galaxy size uh, simply because this is going to be kind of our first time jumping into Utopia. And we really want to have a chance to check out a lot of the mechanics and uh, new introductions that Utopia offers. But uh, as with any new major uh, update to a game, it ends up breaking a lot of the mods. Uh, that a game has to offer and we really at some point would love to do a Stellaris series introducing all sorts of kind of different types of mods that are out there because there's a good handful of them for Stellaris that are pretty awesome. So we're hoping that the small galaxy size will still get us, you know, it's going to, we already know it's going to get us a, a really good uh, size playthrough and a, a nice challenge. Um, 
but we're hoping that you know we can uh, play through the small galaxy size and uh, get through it and then we'll be able to take on some of the mods once they catch up to the utopia update and we'll really be able to uh, see what kind of mod it, the mod atmosphere has for the game okay yeah i mean i think that that when we were when we were talking about this originally that was a really good point about let's try to have it be a reasonable length for this first one with utopia so that we could then uh, maybe inject some really cool mods in the next one. Like I know one of the ones we wanted to use for this one was the, you know, the uh, the mod that never allows for like jump drive tech to show up. That you know, Fallen Empires like no one ever gets jump drive. So we could have really only had hyperdrive the entire time, and it would have been fun to have that. But um, we're not going to risk trying to inject a mod into this. Like I think that that'd be <laughs> we'd be we'd, we'd be running. A little Maybe scared that things playing with fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's shooting your own so, food. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, galaxy shape elliptical, um, which in the past we've done uh, a ring. We wanted it to be a little bit more random, and we didn't want to get blocked behind each other. Um, so that's why we chose to do that. Um, seven AI empires, um, zero advanced AI uh, starts, only one fallen empire, um, and that's the reason for that is since it's tied to. Um, the difficulty that we chose um, was insanity. So that was kind of to strike a little bit of a balance there because we're on insane difficulty. Um, and, and actually, v Vanguard's the one that convinced at least me. I mean, uh, Sabouts always wants to play everything on the most possible difficulty ever, so <laughs> he needed no convincing. But, but um, <laughs> Vanguard convinced me to go ahead and play on insane. Um, why don't you share people like what your argument was for that like why we chose to go up to insane from hard difficulty last time okay so insane basically guys gives the AIs 100% more minerals credits fleet size and everything else research they just got double what the players get so since we are playing three people together working together it makes sense that we are going to get three times the bigger bigger fleets than they are going to get but even we're getting only one third of the resources that are three of us so the only thing that we are going to be behind the AI is just the research everything else we're going to be at least 50 percent ahead of them that's supposing we're fighting only one empire if they team up then we're doomed <laughs> <That's basically laughs> <it. laughs> and we might be anyway right i mean yeah. i don't know i mean when i mean we, when we finished that hard difficulty playthrough i mean it was legitimately hard so uh, i i agreed to do this i'm not going to say that i didn't but uh we'll see i yeah. mean because i mean them getting double everything is pretty scary to me yeah don't expect us to win guys that's what mal trying to say to you <laughs> <laughs> there's a decent chance yeah yeah <laughs> uh let's see but that explains why we we did the no advanced ai starts because they're yeah. already starting advanced um one fallen empire uh, habitable worlds we just left it um at the one x we don't we didn't increase or decrease the likelihood of a uh, goldilocks zone worlds uh we are doing ftl method hyperdrive so until the fallen empires tech kind of breaks out to the others it'll it'll be hyperdrive which gives us a, a chance to use defenses particularly in the early game to establish borders and set up traps and things that i think is kind of fun to do uh advanced neighbors is off in game crisis is on empire placement is random um so i think that pretty much covers everything that we wanted to cover in in the intro um but uh, just bear a couple things in mind we are playing on as you can see down here version 1.5.0 and there might be some slight differences um in the let's play at least in the first couple episodes versus what you're playing on um, when you uh, get access to Utopia. And the reason for that is that we are playing on a, um, a press version, um, sort of an early release version of the game. We wanted to thank Paradox 2 for allowing us to be part of that. Obviously, we're all Stellaris fans, but we also want to be upfront with folks that we were provided uh, the Utopia expansion. Okay, now, um, is there anything else you guys think we need to cover before we yeah. close out the intro here? I to tell something to them. Uh, the D050 that stands for development build 050 so this is a development build we can find some bugs in the game we didn't find any until now but just re realize guys this is a alpha or a beta release so it's prompt to be buggy so don't judge the game on based on that that's all i have to say to you 
Yeah. So if we if we discover some things along the way, particularly in the first few episodes before we transition to the retail release version, just bear that in mind, folks. Um, okay. So about anything else before we close it up? Oh, I'm all ready to go. Are you ready to go? <laughs> Time to purge the Xenos. Okay, folks. Well, we hope that you enjoyed this. We will be putting out uh, we will be putting out episodes daily at 9 a.m. Eastern U.S. We look forward to your comments and feedback as always. I am Mal. I am grateful that I am joined by Vanguard and Sabouts, and we'll see you later. See you guys.